As you know, Corruption is starting to have quite the tradition for poetry out loud competitors. Um, I think we're the school to watch, so I love that. I love that about it. And we're going to hear six fabulous poems today. Um, historically, you guys have been a perfect audience um, every time. So I want to thank you for that and ask you for that again. It is very, very hard to be the person, I'm even shaky and I have nothing to memorize, to be the person who has to come up here and do this. Um, and these are people we care about and they've worked really hard. So being, being still and being serious is a gift to them when they perform. Okay, so without further ado, our champions will start with Joey Blank from the Seventh. symmetry, in what deeps or distant skies burnt the fire of thine eyes, on what wings dare he aspire, what the hand dare seize the fire, what the shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart, and when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand or what dread feet, what the hammer what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain, what the anvil, what dread grass, dare its deadly terrors blast. 
when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears? Did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry?
to always be loyal. Who understands me when I say this is beautiful? The Death of Allegory by Billy Collins. I'm wondering what became of those tall abstractions that you suppose robed in statuesque and paintings and parade about on the pages of the Renaissance, displaying their capital letters like license plates. Truth, cantering on a powerful horse, chastity, eyes downcast, fluttering with veils. Each one was marble, come to life, a thought in a coat. Courtesy, bow, with one hand always extended, Villainy sharpening an instrument behind a wall, reason with her crown, and constancy alert behind a helm. They're all retired now, consigned to a Florida for tropes. There is Justice, standing by an open refrigerator. Valor lies in bed, listening to the rain. Even death has nothing to do but mend his cloak and hood, and all their props are locked away in a warehouse. Hourglasses, lined folds, shackles, and globes. Even if you call them back, there is no place left for them to go, no garden of mirth or bower of bliss. The valley of forgiveness is lined with condominiums, and chainsaws are howling in the forest of despair. Here, on the table near the window, is a vase of peonies. Next to it, black binoculars and a money clip, exactly the sort of thing we now prefer. Objects that sit quietly on a line in lower case, themselves and nothing more. A wheelbarrow, an empty mailbox, a razor blade resting in a glass ashtray. As for the others, the great ideas on horseback and the long-haired virtues in embroidered gowns, it looks as though they have traveled down the road that you find on the last page of storybooks, the one that winds up a green hillside and disappears into an unseen valley where everyone must be fast asleep.